Hi, my name is Michelle Montefinici. I went to Mom's Regional High School, and I am a point guard. Hello, I'm Gianna, and I'm from Ocean Township High School, and I'm the center. Hi, my name is Jackie Lingo. I went to Manuswan High School, and I play forward. Hi, I'm Shakesha Andrews. I went to Lumbers High School. I'm the point guard. Hi, my name is Hermione Bunkle, but everybody calls me Frenchie. I'm from France, and I'm a guard. Hi, I'm Cheyenne Lyons. I'm from Kingsburg High School, and I am a point guard. Hi, my name is Colleen Brandigan. I'm from Madawan High School, and I'm a shooting guard. I'm Rachel Rouse. I went to Academy Charter High School, and I'm a shooting guard. We are Brookdale's women's basketball. Go Jersey Blues! And welcome back inside the Collins Arena for Jersey Blues basketball here on Brookdale TV. Brian Goudsward, Tim Kettlefamo here with you. Brookdale gets set to host Manor College today, and Brookdale keeps on rolling. They're winners of three straight. They're up to second in the standings in the region behind only Middlesex, and Brookdale with a record of 16-6. and six. And Tim leading the way as we take a look at our key players for Brookdale. It seems like she has been the player most of the time, but that is Chikasha Andrews. Yeah, she had 32 points against Sussex, was one of those key players that you talked about. Brookdale really has depended on her the last several games, and she's played excellently, so it's it's been really fun to watch her. Brookdale has a full roster this evening, too, so that'll be fun to watch, but yeah, definitely, Chikasha Andrews is the one to watch. On the other side, for manner the player that you're going to have to watch there is tiana gavin she's someone who also is coming in very very hot she had 28 points in the last game that manner played against raritan valley and she comes in here averaging under 13 points a game so she's someone that you want to keep an eye on particularly for the blue jays this evening and the blue jays enter action with a record of 11 and 8 out of the division 2 section of the region 19 and they are right in the middle of the pack in the standings as far as Division II teams go. So another challenge for the Jersey Blues. The officials for tonight's game, John Capoloni, Galen Lowry, and Irving Stevenson. So the Jersey Blues starters have made their way out near midcourt. And now the Blue Jays will join them. First game of our doubleheader. We'll have the men's game after the conclusion of this one here on Brookdale TV. Glad you're with us on this Tuesday evening. So it is Atrice Adams and Hermani Bankel to take the draw, and Brookdale controls the opening tip. We are underway at the Collins Arena. Starting lineup for Brookdale, it's Chikasha Andrews, Colleen Brannigan, Gianna Errico, Hermani Bankel, and Rachel Rouse. Starting out with Andrews, Ooh. and she just throws that one away. Miscommunication on the pass, and a Brookdale turnover to start the night. Yeah, not the way that Brookdale wanted to start. That pass was intended for Gianna Errico, who was coming off of a screen, but she wasn't quite ready for that pass. We'll see, though, how Manor comes out. These two teams, this is the first time they've ever played each other, so this is interesting to see how Manor comes out. Obviously, Brookdale already showing a lot of defense to the baseline for Steele. Her jumper is off the mark. Offensive rebound, Dowd puts it back up, and the rebound out to Rouse. Now, Brookdale coming off a win, 70 to 63, their last game on the road at Sussex, and there's the first points of the night. It's Andrews on the scoop layup to the rim. And that's why she's so hard to defend, because she can drive the ball and shoot it, too. Manor's gonna have a tough night if that's gonna be what Andrews can do in the lane. And now forcing a turnover, Andrews comes up with the ball. Andrews gets picked up defensively by Deja Davis. High screen, Errico. Andrews on the drive, and the bank shot doesn't go. Rebounded by Davis. Manor College making the trip from Jenkintown, Pennsylvania, a suburb of Philadelphia. Davis in the paint, her shot is good off the glass. So we are tied at two, early going here at the Collins Arena. Andrews, the crossover. Now she pulls it back and gives it for Rouse. Shot clock down to 10, long three off the back of the iron for Andrews, rebound Davis. Here come the Blue Jays. Dowd to the rim shot, blocked. 
Good transition defense. Erico gets the rejection. Yeah, nice job not giving up on the play. Erico and Brookdale, for that matter, didn't really have numbers. They were struggling to get back on defense. Nice play by Erico to get down the floor, put a hand in her face, and get a ball, get a hand on the basket, and swat it away. Should mention also, Brian, that this is a team that is Division II in the Region 19. So this is a little bit of a step up for what Brookdale's usually used to playing here on their home floor. And a four and five conference record for Manor College. They are seven and five on the road. Ball movement along the perimeter right now. It's with Steele and now top of the key, Davis. 12 to shoot. Feed the post and Dowd. Adams kicks it out. Open look, Steele rimming no on a three. Rebound, Erico. Brannigan's long pass. Bankle picks it up, takes it back out to the perimeter. And the Jersey Blues will get set up. Andrews bumped on the outside. Deja Davis will pick up her first. So for Brookdale, the record is 16 up, 6 down. They are 6 and 4 here at the Collins Arena. Even better away from Lincroft, they have a 10 and 2 record on the road. But all in all, a very successful first season for head coach Rich Brunson. Andrews takes the handoff, tries the scoop layup. That doesn't go, and it's a travel. So a Jersey Blue turnover at the 7.15 mark, quarter number one. As there you get a look at Rich Brunson. And a terrific first year he has had, Tim. Yeah, I mean, like I said, he came in here as assistant coach from the men's team for several years. He was a Rutgers Scarlet Knight from 1979-1983. And to be able to pick it up right here in his first season and have so much success early on, really a testament to how good of a coach he is. Now Steele gets the offensive rebound and the putback for her first points. Slow start offensively for both teams and just a 4-2 lead for the Blue Jays. Andrews defended by Davis, now Erico high post. Erico tried for Bankel, stolen by Davis. Numbers for Manor. Davis, shovel pass inside. Steele missed it. Steele gets it back and puts it home. And that'll lead to a timeout. Rich Brunson not happy with how his Jersey Blues have started the game. It's 6-2. Manor College will take a break right now. Come back on Brookdale TV. Hi, I'm Dan Lees from the Speech Communication Department at Brookdale Community College. I welcome you to come and explore Brookdale and see all that we have to offer. In the Speech Communication Department, we teach courses in public speaking, interpersonal communication, and small group communication. For me, college was a life-changing experience. I never looked at the world the same way after my time in college. And I think Brookdale will offer you that same kind of life-changing experience. Not only will you enjoy yourself at Brookdale and have a good time, but you're going to learn a lot. And that's gonna you're going to take those skills out into the world and apply them in your work field, whatever it is. Howard Tim Kettle, Famo back here at the Collins Arena. Just underway, first game of our doubleheader. Slow start for Brookdale. They trail 6-2. to two. And outside the timeout, Andrews to the corner. Rouse, it's a three short. And it was tipped by... Gervin out of bounds, and it's off Brookdale. We'll quickly give the starting lineup for Manor College. We didn't get a chance to earlier. It's Tiana Garvin, Sean Dow, Deja Davis, China Steele, and Etrice Adams. Working with a four-point lead. Davis, the curl and kick. Steele for three, way off rebound, Erico. Brookdale may have had a chance on a fast break, but now the defense gets back in transition. Andrews catching fire off the mark. Long rebound, Brannigan, and a second chance for Brookdale on this possession. Brannigan, that's an open look. That's good for three. And Brannigan, her second game back following a five-game absence due to an ankle injury. And Brookdale, very glad to have her back in the fold. Yeah, she's definitely one of the threats on the offensive floor. So Brookdale's had a couple of rough games trying to go without her, but looks like she's in full form tonight. And trying to track it down with Steele, but it's out of bounds. Brookdale will get possession. Here's a change for the Blue Jays as... Kalima Daniels checks into the game. And China Steele will 
get a rest. For Brookdale, no changes to the starting lineup thus far. Brannigan will try another three, and she's got it. Back-to-back three-pointers, and Brookdale on a 6-0 run to take the lead. Playing catch on the perimeter, three on the way. Daniels short, rebound corralled by Rouse. So Brannigan with the six early points. This time on the drive, shot misses, rebounded by Adams. Brannigan applying pressure, but Manor College able to beat it as Davis advances. Davis, nice feet inside and the bucket. It's Tiana Garvin. Nice push up the floor by Davis. We talked to head coach Dave Ellerby before the game. He said his team likes to play a lot of up-tempo offense. That just was an opportunity for the Blue Jays to catch Brookdale sleeping, and they were able to execute it perfectly. Erico in the post. Brannigan gives it up. Andrews lines up a three. That's good. Brookdale's gotten a three-point stroke early. Three of them in the early going. It's an 11-8 Jersey Blue lead. Oh, Andrews comes off yet another 30-point performance. 32 points in her last game against Sussex. Here's a three, and the answer, it's Kalima Daniels for the Blue Jays. So a hot start from the three-point arc for both teams. Andrews this time on the drive and draws the foul. Yeah, Manor College is historically not a team that shoots all that great from behind the three-point line. As a team, they're only shooting 26%. So it's a surprise to me that we've seen players such as Kalima Daniels shoot so well early on from behind the three-point line. So Andrew's first attempt at the line, 81% free throw shooter is good. Here comes Michelle Montefinice, first substitution for Rich Brunson. And it's Rachel Rouse who makes her way to the bench. And Andrews a couple weeks ago was named the Garden State Athletic Conference Player of the Week. Splits the pair, the rebound to Garvin. Oh. As Daniels defended by Montefinice. Davis way outside. Nine to shoot for Manor. Andrews providing the defense. The three by Daniels is short. And the rebound to Erico on a bounce. See if Brookdale can get it advanced here and they get a bailout because Montefinice is bumped. <laughs> and the yeah. foul is committed when Brookdale was in trouble. I don't know that they were going to advance it past midcourt, but it's the third team foul against the Blue Jays. Yes, yeah, somebody needed to be back there to help Gianna Errico. Michelle Montefinice was there, but you need to have at least more than one player back there when they're pressing the defenses in the backcourt. Coach Brunson wanted the fouler much earlier on in that possession. He was able to get bailed out by one, but that's a situation where Brookdale has to have their head in the game and realize that their teammates on the other side of the floor need help. Brannigan tried to feed the post. Jackie Lingo is in the game, and yeah, she is called for a travel. So the Jersey Blues have had their fair share of turnovers in this opening quarter, but they've made three from downtown and working with a one-point lead, two and a half to play opening quarter. Gervin fires short, rebound Montefinice. And that's a travel, and I don't know about that call, as it either looked like it should have been a jump ball as Daniels came together with Montefinice, if not a foul called as there was contact. Instead, it goes as a travel. Yeah, I'm kind of on the side with Coach Brunson there. I thought that there were both players, Davis and Montefinice, had the, the hand on the ball, which, as you said, Brian, probably should have been a jump ball, but instead they called a travel on Montefinice. I don't know about that call, but Brookdale's not got to play defense. Daniels misses, rebound to Lingo. And we saw in the last game that we did some questionable cause against Atlanta Cape that kind of hurt both teams in that game for the women. Bankles first shot misses, rebounded by Adams. Manor College coming off one of their 
best games of the season. It was a 104-62 route at home against Raritan Valley as Gervin can't hit the three. Rebound Lingo. Brookdale looking to push. But Manor gets back in transition. Andrews finds Brannigan. Three-pointer is good again. And Manor will take a timeout. Or Brookdale took a timeout. Someone did. There was a stoppage for a second there. But the Blue Jays are ready to play the next possession. I'm not sure what the whistle was. I think the officials were trying to make sure whether it was a two or a three there, Brian, for Colleen Brannigan. But still, nice shot by her. And I'm really surprised that Brookdale has really come out and been living and dying by the three early on. Well, she has nine points in the early going. Adams misses on the interior. And you get a jump ball call. Possession will favor Manor College. I mean, historically, we've seen this team in Brookdale drive to the basket from players like Jakasha Andrews, Michelle Montefanese, even Hermione Bankel. We haven't really seen that early on, so possibly some different strategy for this game by Coach Brunson. Adams to Gervin down low. The shot up, no good, but a foul as that was Kalima Daniels who will shoot free throws for the Blue Jays. Lingo commits her first. And what I'm noticing with Manor, Brian, is they're using the pat, they're passing the ball around. Everybody's getting a chance to touch it on the possession. They're making Brookdale move around. Brookdale, for the most part, has played a 2-3 zone for the majority of this first half. So what Manor has been trying to do is they've tried to spread the floor, get everyone to touch the ball before they take a shot. And right now, it's working fairly well for them. I've been pretty impressed with the way they've played on offense. Free throw, no good. Loose ball picked up by Brannigan. Brannigan has been the star for Brookdale in this first quarter with those three three-pointers. It's a three-point Jersey Blue lead as we hit the one-minute mark first quarter. Andrews steps back, way short on a three. Brannigan trying to save it, but it's over to the Blue Jays. So for Manor College, they have a new head coach. It is Dave Ellerby, who today is coaching just his second game after an Unexpected turn of events, Robert Reeves stepping down. He had been the longtime head coach here. As Dowd misses, rebounded by Talia Terrell. And that's a name that we have not said in quite some time, but Talia Terrell, along with I, Brianna Moore, are back for Brookdale after a long absence. But this is the fullest roster they've worked with all season as Brannigan from an impossible angle able to get it back. And then the rebound in traffic taken by Dowd. Daniels brings it ahead in the final 13 seconds. And off the glass, it's good. Kennedy Telfair. Five seconds left, shot clock turned off. Andrews in the paint. Contact no call, picked up by Telfair and that'll end the opening quarter. So a good one for the Jersey Blues against Division II Manor College. It's Brookdale 15, Manor 14 after one here at the Collins Arena. We'll take a break and get set for the second quarter when we come back on Brookdale TV. My name is Barbara Burke. I've been a full-time faculty member in the nursing department since 2001 and a nurse for many years before that. When I think about education, I think about opening doors for students. It certainly opened many doors for me. It opens doors to new experiences, meeting new people, having fresh perspectives on things, and having more career options. When I think about Brookdale, I think about an innovative learning environment. And no place is that more apparent than here in the Nursing Skills Lab. Here in the Skills Lab, we take care of patients. We have simulated experiences for our students that are very close to what they would experience in the hospital or other environments. They take care of patients and they get to problem solve and think critically through situations and work together to take care of these patients. So if you come to Brookdale, I think you'll have a great education in an innovative environment that allows for you to be engaged in learning and to be able to uh, be a nurse of the future because you'll be able to critically think through many situations.
The meditation series will strengthen your spirit with peace and balance. Intro to Zen Meditation provides a foundation of... Arena here in Lincroft. First game of our doubleheader, the Jersey Blues hosting the Manor College Blue Jays. And Brookdale able to hold their own in that first quarter and working with a one-point lead as we start the second period. Brookdale opens up with Andrews, Errico, Bankel, Brannigan, and Rouse. And Andrews starts the quarter by drilling the jumper for two. Williams, Dowd to the corner. I'm way off on the try from Daniels. Three-point range, Bankel ends up with it. Bankel pushing back the other way. Brannigan, nice feet inside. Bankel able to get it to go off the glass. And that's just nice heads-up play by Hermione Bankel. She saw there was an opportunity down the floor. Manor hadn't really gotten across the mid-court line and set up their defense. Nice job looking for the open guy and getting the ball to them. Williams, back out for Daniels. Daniels the drive and the floater. Rebound, Errico. Brooktail with a very good defensive start. They have contested just about every shot Manor has taken. As Rouse draws the foul down near the basket, that'll be on Tiana Garvin. Yeah, Rachel Rouse has been someone that we've talked about the last several games. I think we were talking about the last time Brookdale was at home against Atlanta Cape, who's really kind of been one of the star players as of late on this team. Usually a, te a player who early on in the season we would see come off of the bench and play, but as of late has really been really strong, particularly shooting-wise and driving to the basket, drawing fouls, getting to the foul line. She's really been a star for the Brookdale team the last couple of games. And in that game that you were referencing against Atlantic Cape, Rass put up a season-best 28 points. So she was a big factor in that blowout win, teaming up with Andrews as the Big Jersey Blue scores. Brookdale with a five point lead, the pass tip stolen by Errico. Three on two break, but Williams able to get her hands on the pass. Bankel able to get it back and draws the foul. So Brannigan did well to keep it alive by saving it. And now Bankel an opportunity at the line. Bankel has been one of the steady players for the Jersey Blues all season, averaging just under 10 a game. Hits on the first one. Uh, she shoots it 55% from the free throw line this year. Yeah, Hermione Bankel actually made the Dean's list for 2016 in the fall, so getting it done on and off the court there for Hermione Bankel. Manor College has played many more games on the road than they have at home. Seven and five on the road, that's 12 games, but just seven at home outside Philadelphia as Steele gets called on a travel. Yeah, Manor struggled the last several offensive possessions to get anything going. It almost looks like coming out of the first quarter break, so to speak, when we switched quarters, that Brookdale's changed up their defense a little bit, and Manor really hasn't been as strong the last couple of possessions. They struggled to try to get the ball inside, which was working for them in the first quarter. It's Brannigan lost it. Ends up going to the ground, which, even though she's okay, you don't want to see any kind of health issues coming off that sprained ankle, which cost her five games on the shelf. That was in the Passaic game a couple weeks back. Open look, Daniels keeps firing. Offensive rebound, Adams. And Rouse able to come away with it for Brookdale. Andrews trying to push. Andrews hooks a pass outside, it's picked off. Jockey Williams, head of the floor, Daniels. Coast to the rim and gets the bank shot. And that last possession by Jakasha Andrews, she was looking to get it out to Hermione Bankel. She had the right idea. The problem was the pass just came too late. And Manor, nice job getting up the floor. Nice transition defense to go for the two. 
Andrews is working on 30 points in six of her last seven. That attempt way off, rebound Adams. Manor College is led in scoring by Tiana Garvin. She averages a shade under 13 a game for the Blue Jays. As Daniels, the wild attempt. And who touched it last? It is the Blue Jays. The ball back to Brookdale. As Sierra Wigan is going to come into the game. And replacing Daniels. Now it's Brookdale 20, Manor College 16. 6.40 to go here in this first half. Bankle, the nice drive and finish. Nice drive by Bankle. I mean, that, that's the way that you set up. You go around the screen, you go hard to the basket. If you get the contact and you get the foul, great, but you gotta go hard to the rim. Hermione Bankle's been really strong with that all year. Catch and shoot, Ligon, no good. She gets it back. Bank shot, no, tipped in the rebound to Andrews. Andrews a little out of control. Had it knocked out of bounds, but it's off the Blue Jays. As now Brookdale will make a couple of changes. Jackie Lingo, Michelle Montefinis are in. Brannigan and Rouse will sit. And something that I'm noticing, it hasn't really hurt Brookdale so far because Manor hasn't been able to capitalize on it, but Manor is doing a better job of rebounding on offense than Brookdale is. Brookdale's not doing a good job of boxing out. Like I said, it hasn't hurt them so far, but they better clean that up quickly. Andrews thought she was fouled. She takes an extra second to get up and join Brookdale on defense. Steele is called for steps. This is a team in Manor that comes in averaging 16 turnovers a game for the Blue Jays. So it's not a surprise early on that we've seen some turnovers on both sides. Andrews is going to get a breather right now. And the thing about Manor is you mentioned they turn it over 16 times a game, but they're very good at Forcing turnovers on the other end. Lingo misses. Tracked down all the way to Sierra Ligon. And back the other way come the Blue Jays who take the ball away about 26 times a game, which is a tremendous number. Gervin inside the arc, no rebound. Lingo. Rouse, one dribble, puts up a three. In and out, tipped in the rebound to Taylor. Rouse the only one back in transition. Steele all the way to the rim, shot misses. Steele gets it back. Steele another chance and three opportunities. Bankle comes away with it for Brookdale. And Rich Brunson will use a timeout with 4.49 left. First half, Brookdale with a great start leading by six. And before we step aside, we'll take a look at one of the last plays here. And we'll step, we'll take a break now. 449 left, second quarter. We'll be back. Basic principles of Zen instruction. Sitting, walking, and breathing techniques allowing one's mind to rest. Allowing peace within helps develop powerful ways to invoke inner harmony and radiate peace whenever you are in need, no matter where you are. Healing Energy Meditations provides tools to help gently calm the mind to find the quiet place within. Go to brookdalecc.edu and click on Continuing Education, then Lifelong Learning. Brian Goudsward, Tim Cattlefamo, the rest of our Brookdale TV crew here on Brookdale TV as we are down the stretch first half in this one. 4.49 left in this second quarter and what has been a very good first half for Brookdale going against a challenge in a Division II opponent in the Blue Jays and 
to have a six point lead, I think they have to feel very pleased about where things stand. As Brannigan, corner pop, that one misses. Long rebound, Steele. Steele's gonna take it all the way to the rim and lay it in. And coming out of that timeout, that's not what you want to do. Just really bad transition defense for Brookdale. I think one of the reasons why Coach Brunson took that timeout was for two reasons. Brookdale's not rebounding the ball underneath the basket, they're not boxing out, and they're not getting back on defense, which for Manor that likes to push the ball could be trouble for them later on in this game. Deja Davis is back in for the Blue Jays. Steele fires for three, rimming, no. And it's rebounded by Bankel. Getting a hand on it was Dowd, but Brookdale able to rescue it. 15 to shoot, Montefinis, the drive, the floater, and it's rebounded by Deja Davis. Davis into the lane, throws it up off the backboard, and Errico collects the rebound. Errico had it slapped away. Unable to pry it back away from Davis. Montefinis, the long pass is right in the hands of Dowd. Dowd taking on three defenders. It's going the other way. Offensive foul. Montefinis takes the charge, and Dowd delivered the blow. Yeah, my gosh, last couple of possessions have really been back and forth, and I'm not sure about that call. I thought that was a charge, or excuse me, that was a blocking foul, actually, on Montefinis to be different from what the officials called, but kind of wacky. Brookdale's been struggling to try to keep the ball. They're trying to push the ball, but it's not really working really well. They're throwing the ball away, and for Manor, they're having so many opportunities at the rim, but they just can't finish. Andrews gives it up for Rouse. Brannigan, the pump fake, steps inside the arc. And way short as Gervin able to save it from out of bounds. And Davis will get it set up, four defended by four. Now they swing it back inside. Dowd kicks it out. Gervin inside gets it to go. So Tiana Garvin, who was the leading scorer, she averages 12.8 a game and coming off a big double-double, 28 points, 13 boards in the win over Raritan Valley. As getting the steal was Garvin and she'll go in uncontested for the layup. Again, just poor passing by Brookdale. They're just being a little bit lazy. They're not having the Christmas that they normally have with the passing in this game so far, and it's hurting them. Manners, while they're not shooting all that well and not capitalizing on all of their opportunities, they've closed this game. Now they've tied it up at 22. Now they're on a 6-0 run since the last time out. Erico is fouled, and it's called on Etrice Adams, who picks up her second. It's the fourth against the Blue Jays of the second quarter. Brookdale has not committed a personal foul in this period. As the Jersey Blues have seen a six point lead evaporate. Game now tied. Andrews pass is stolen on the out of bounds. Davis gets around Brannigan, stolen by Errico. Good anticipation on the steal. Brookdale in a little bit of a scoring drought. Brannigan looks to change that to Strong. And it's rebounded by Daniels. On the drive, Davis hanging in the air, missed it. Bankle tracks it down. Brookdale running, Bankle, nice bounce pass. Andrews couldn't finish it. Knocked up in the air, back to Andrews, and she'll go to the line as the foul is called as Telfair was in the area. Yeah, that's a rare miss for Jakash Andrews. Normally she can finish that, but good job by her not giving up on the play, getting her own rebound, and going back up with it and drawing the foul. And it goes on Daniels, her second. Andrews good on the first attempt. And Andrews 
while she was the leading scorer for Brookdale, did not have many 30-point games early in the season. But she's on a stretch six of her last seven. She has scored 30 points in. And that, of course, led her to getting Garden State Athletic Conference Player of the Week a couple of weeks back. Now, Brookdale regains the lead with a mi an even minute to go first half. Dowd off the glass, no, but a foul is called. So this one is on Lingo. And Jackie picks up her second, only the first team foul, though, against Brookdale in the second quarter. And Jackie Lingo didn't fill the gap that Chalia Terrell had left. Again, when you're in a 2-3 zone underneath the paint, it's very, very particular. Whenever someone leaves their area, you have to always have someone to fill that gap. Lingo didn't do that. And when the hole opened up and Manor was able to capitalize on it with Goud, she had to commit the foul. Dowd, 65% free throw shooter. And the rebound to Garvin, and then she draws the foul. So this is a Manor team that draws a ton of fouls. Their last game, they put up 41 free throws and made 29 of them, so that's a pretty good percentage. But they have had seven games this season where they've taken 30 or more free throws. And the bad fact, back, bad fact about that, Brian, is they also commit quite a bit of personal fouls, too. They come in here averaging just under 19 personal fouls a game. So while they have opportunities to go to the line because of their driving, the way that they run their offense, which is good, they also have problems with foul trouble on the defensive side as well. They're not making their free throws in this first half as Either they called the lane violation, the free throw missed anyway, and it's Brookdale ball. Blue Jays showing some pressure in the back court. Andrews, long pass ahead for Rouse. Rouse taking it to the rim and scores off the glass. That's a way to defeat the full court press. Perfect execution from Brookdale. Williams back to the corner Davis they play catch in the corner with Garvin Lingo gets a piece of it Lingo comes away with the steal Whoa. she had two defenders there and throws it right to Sean Dowd who puts it up and misses offensive rebound put back by Telfair no good and now Brookdale comes back the other way in the final six seconds Andrews with three Andrews with two Brannigan had it blocked as Dowd rejects the three-point attempt at the buzzer, <laughs> but a very strong first half for Brookdale. As they close the half, they were tied at 22. They regain a four-point lead. They led most of the way by as many as six. And you have to remember, going against a Division II opponent, that's always a big challenge, but they're proving they're up to the challenge so far. Yeah, I think they've played pretty well. Like I said, the only areas that I see Brookdale really struggling in is the rebounding category. We've seen Manor get quite a bit of offensive rebounds. The problem with the Blue Jays is they haven't really been able to capitalize on many of them. We've seen a lot of drives to the basket. That's why they're so good at going to the line, because they draw a lot of contact. The problem is they haven't been able to make those opportunities count. But certainly, Brian, I mean, coming into this game against a Division II team, this is a great way to go into the half. Again, there's a lot of things that I think Brookdale can clean up. But still, at the end of the day, after 20 minutes of play, to have a four-point lead over a team that's in a totally different division than you are, that's a pretty good first half, I would say. And Brookdale will look to make it four consecutive wins, currently riding a three-game winning streak. So we're at the half right now. The Jersey Blues with the four-point lead. We'll step aside for the halftime break now and come back with the second half on the other side. And we're back here. Brian Goudsward, Tim Catalfamo here at the Collins Arena. And Tim, one player who stood out here in this first half is Brookdale with a four-point lead. Colleen Brannigan back after that five-game absence. And she made three three-pointers early, nine first-half points. Good to have her back in action. Yeah, Colleen Brannigan did an excellent job. Again, you said, Brian, she's coming off of that ankle injury, and she's not really 100% healed. So it's been interesting to watch how she's been playing. But she's been playing well. What I've seen with this Brookdale team, though, is they've struggled rebound the ball so in the second half for Manor to have any chance they're gonna have to do a better job of capitalizing on these opportunities that Brookdale's giving them underneath the basket as Rouse came up with the steal but immediately Atrice Adams 
forces the jump ball. And this time possession arrow favors Brookdale, who starts the second half with Andrews, Rouse, Brannigan, Bankel, and Erico on the floor. Brookdale with the four point lead over Division II Manor College. Brannigan defended by Dowd. Bankel for Erico, and Erico had it knocked away and picked up by Adams. Here come the Blue Jays in transition. Andrews, the good transition defense to deny Garvin. Yeah, I thought Garvin there was fouled by Andrews. I think she may have gotten away with a personal. Now Andrews looking to use the Erico screen. Raz puts up a three. Brannigan tips it. Brannigan is on the end line out of bounds. Yeah, I think Brannigan's used to playing with injury, I would assume, because she's from the women's soccer team, and we know that's a pretty high contact sport. So I've been very impressed with her coming off of the bench and still kind of nursing that injury, not quite 100%, and playing really well so far in this game. Corner pop, it's a three, and way off was China Steel. Andrews pulls up on a three. And comes up short, rebounded by Steele. Dow trying to feed the post. And it was last touched by Bank, all the pass intended for Adams. Blue Jays basketball. So Garvin will be the inbounder. Davis on the drive and fouled before the shot. And Rachel Rouse called on the reach in. First team foul against Brookdale and Rouse picks up her first. So it's a new shot clock for Manor. Garvin once again to inbound. This time it's for Davis. Steele fires for three. Rouse tips it. Steele ended up with it for a second, but Rask gets it back for Brookdale. Two on one break. Andrews, the nice move around Davis for the finish. And a nice hesitation there by Andrews. Davis had her pretty well guarded in the sense that it was going to have to be Andrews forcing it in there. She hesitated, kind of waited for Davis to bite on a fake. She went in and lays it in for the two points. Garvin, the drive and kick. Blocked by Erico on the try from Dowd. Hanging in the air was Davis. That's no good, and Brannigan clears the glass. So Brookdale, as you mentioned, they've given up a ton of offensive rebounds. As Manor picks up the basketball, it's Steele leading the break. And Steele finds Garvin for the easy two. But one of the reasons why they've had so many offensive rebounds is because they outsize Brookdale by a wide margin. Three players six foot or taller on this Blue Jays squad. Andrews into the paint. Shot was altered, it's picked up by Adams. Davis the other way. Davis for Garvin, she gets trapped. Garvin nowhere to go, able to flip it back out. Dowd's jumper, rebound to Bankle. Brannigan extra feed, Rouse for two, that's good. And just not a very good job there by Manor getting back on defense. Left Rachel Rouse wide open in the corner. But I'm saying this, Brian, if Manor could just make a couple of these shots that are underneath the basket that are really rolling off the rim, I think Brookdale's gonna have a really tough time because so far we have not seen them shut that down. Manor's still getting these open looks underneath the basket. Eventually those shots are gonna start falling. Davis kicks it out, steals jumper, drops in. So China Steel, who averages double figure scoring for the Blue Jays, 10.3 a game. One of three players on this Manor roster to average at least 10. Andrews is bumped and the foul is called, it's on Adams. So for Etrice Adams, that is her third. It's the first against Manor of the second half, and Adams will likely be forced to sit. 
As here comes Kennedy Telfair to replace her in the lineup. Andrews picked up by Davis. Brannigan ball fake, baseline drive. And it was Steele with the good help defense. She comes away with the basketball. And the feet inside, Telfair shot off the glass, misses. Dowd puts it back up. And then Brannigan collects the board. Erico, and that is a double dribble call on the Jersey Blues. Turnover with 5.16 left in the third. Yeah, Manners definitely had their opportunities at the basket, but I'm really surprised that they've just not been able to get any points underneath there. I know it's tough, it's not as it looks from all the way up, but they've got to capitalize on these opportunities underneath the basket that Brookdale's unfortunately not been able to give them. So Garvin collected the steal miss, and Garvin will go to the free throw line for the Blue Jays. I should say that Brookdale has given them, not unfortunately that they haven't been able to give them. So for Chikasha Andrews, it'll be her first. Second against Brookdale, and got a very quick look there at Paul Chizek in the men's game coming up after we are done here. As Garvin, who shoots it at just 46%, Short on the first attempt. Change for Brookdale. Montefinese checks in. And Rachel Rouse to the bench. Garvin, who put up 28 points in her last game, and that was a season best for the freshman from Philadelphia. One out of two from the line, and the Brookdale lead is three. Andrews throws it away. Tracked down in the backcourt by Dowd. Steele is open. Steele will take the baseline. Ball knocked loose, and Montefinese picks it up for Brookdale. Brannigan had it poked away. Andrews there to get it. Andrews for Erico, her baseline jumper. Out to Montefinese off the back tap. And Andrews puts up a three. That's good. I was just about to say, Brian, Brookdale has had a lot of trouble with this full court pressure that Manor's been applying. Luckily, Andrew was able to get a three there, but just really, really struggling to just get the ball across midcourt is Brookdale. Garvin, the answer, no. Side rim, offensive rebound, and the easy basket for China Steele. And Rich Brunson very upset after his team gives up that second chance. He uses a timeout. 4.08 left, quarter number three, four point. Brookdale lead on Brookdale TV. We have simulated experiences for our students that are very close to what they would experience in the hospital or other environments. They take care of patients and they get to problem solve and think critically through situations and work together to take care of these patients. So if you come to Brookdale, I think you'll have a great education in an innovative environment that allows for you to be engaged in learning and to be able to uh, be a nurse of the future because you'll be able to critically think through many situations. The meditation series will strengthen your spirit with peace and balance. And we're back here, Brian Gadsworth, Tim Cattlefamo. First game of our Brookdale TV doubleheader. And outside the timeout, it's Brookdale basketball. Four point Jersey Blue lead. As Andrews on the perimeter now drives, and the lay in is no good. Rebound Dowd. So Andrews was able to get all the way to the basket, but couldn't finish. Daniels, that's a three. Long rebound to Bankle. Chance for Brookdale in transition. Brannigan for Andrews. Andrews trapped in the corner. Erico ball fake. Bankles jumper inside the arc, way off. Rebound Daniels. Daniels taking it, tried to take it to the rim. It's out of bounds and it's off Manor College. 
There have been a lot of turnovers in this game on both sides, Brian. Very, very sloppy. Both of these two teams come in here averaging over 60 points a game. We're not even anywhere close to that and almost approaching the fourth quarter now. Just a lot of sloppy play. Come up on three minutes to go in this third quarter. Andrews using the Erico screen, takes it right to the rim and draws the foul. And so Chikasha Andrews will shoot free throws. The manor foul is called on Tiana Garvin, who picks up her second. And Andrews, a very good free throw shooter, shooting 81% on the season. They have asked her to do a lot this season, but she has been able to shoulder the load offensively from game number one. Yeah, she's really been kind of the main offensive scorer. She handles the ball coming up, and she's really someone that Brookdale looks to to try to lead the team on offense. So there's been a lot of responsibility dumped on her this year, but she's been able to handle it with grace and be able to go well beyond the expectations of her position. She makes a pair of free throws. Rouse forces the steal, but an over and back call as Rouse lost where she was on the floor. And so it's Manor basketball. Yeah, I mentioned Brookdale having trouble with the full court press. Manor's having the same difficulty because Brookdale's been pressing them in the backcourt as well. As Garvin able to track it down. Garvin, the jump step move in the pain and gets it to go. That is a nice move by Tiana Garvin for the Blue Jays. And this game has been close throughout. Four point game now, 2.20 left to play in the third. Erico, pass picked off by Davis. Two on two break, Davis to Daniels. And Daniels forced to back it out. Andrews harassing her. Daniels able to turn the corner, flips it up. And Brannigan gets the basketball. Bankle all the way to the rim, did everything but make the basket as Dowd picks it up. Daniels just keeps firing, and she has been way off for most of the game. Brannigan gets the rebound. Andrews on the drive. Count it, and one for Andrews. As Dowd commits the personal, and Andrews a chance for a three-point play. And I'm probably going to sound like a broken record, but Manor is having an awful time and doing a terrible job of getting back on defense. That last possession, when Andrews crossed the midcourt line, three of the Manor defenders were still in the backcourt. Nobody had even gotten back on defense. It's very difficult to defend when you have three of your players still coming up the floor, not really hustling to get down and back on defense. And Andrews took advantage of that and was able to get to the line. Jackie Lingo is the Brookdale substitution. Andrews converts on the three-point play, and that extends the Jersey Blue lead to seven. Brookdale looking to make it four consecutive wins. They have won five of their last six games overall. Andrews pokes it away. 15 on the timer for Garvin. Daniels once again. No good. Offensive rebound, Garvin, the putback. That won't go. Lingo gets the rebound. Andrews taking it to the rim. The floater is off. And Dowd is taken right to the ground by Lingo. The ball will be Manners. And I really think the story in this game, Brian, is I probably sound like a broken record saying this, but Manor has just not been able to make use of the offensive rebounds that they're getting underneath the basket. We've seen so many close shots that just have not been able to go in or have not been able to be executed properly underneath the basket for Manor. That's really, I believe, the difference in this game. Dowd draws a crowd. 10 to shoot. Williams gives it up. Dowd on the drive, tried the shovel pass, but it's to nobody, looking for Garvin down low, and it's Jersey Blue basketball, just over a half minute to go in the third. And Chikasha Andrews is gonna get a quick rest in here. 
the final half minute, third quarter. Brookdale with a seven point lead. Brannigan had the touch early from three point territory. 12 to shoot. Talia Terrell's shot was blocked on the perimeter by Williams. Williams, the spin, misses on the jumper, knocked out of bounds. Possession stays with the Blue Jays. Hermani Bankel is coming in. Brannigan will sit with 9.8 left in the third. Garvin to inbound her team down by seven. Rouse trying the acrobatic save, but it will not matter. Five seconds left as Williams handles. Daniels, another three-pointer, no good. And that ends the third quarter of play from the Collins Arena. Brookdale with a seven-point lead. It's the Jersey Blues, 38. The Blue Jays, 31, will take a break, come back for the fourth quarter oh on Brookdale TV. Hello, I'm Gianna, and I'm from Ocean Township High School, and I'm the center. Hi, my name is Jackie Lingo. I went to Manaswan High School, and I play forward. Hi, I'm Tracacia Andrews. I went to Lumberman's High School. I'm the point guard. Hi, my name is Hermione Bunkle, but everybody calls me Frenchie. I'm from France, and I'm a guard. Hi, I'm Cheyenne Lyons. I'm from Kingsburg High School, and I am a point guard. Hi, my name's Colleen Brannigan. I'm from Madawan High School, and I'm a shooting guard. I'm Rachel Rouse. I went to Academy Charter High School, and I'm a shooting guard. We are Brookdale's women's basketball. Go Jersey! Hi, I'm Sophia Pearl, and I'm here at the Scholarship Recognition Ceremony, where Brookdale celebrates students who have received scholarships to further their education and the donors who made their scholarships possible. Let's go meet some of the recipients. My name is Kyle Hayes, and I received a scholarship from the uh, Stone Foundation of New Jersey. Brookdale's always been kind of like a one of the top schools for getting you high quality education. Hi, my name is Sienna Carson and I received the Brett Boone Memorial Scholarship. I feel astounded because it's my first scholarship, so the fact that I was picked out of so many people, it, it means something. It means that they've been looking at what I've been doing and what I've been up to and it's nice to be recognized. I'm really proud to be here to give our scholarships to our uh, students today. Uh, they're all sitting behind us and it's a very exciting time for us. We're here for the annual scholarship recognition ceremony where we have all the students at Brookdale who have received scholarships through the foundation come here to be recognized and we also recognize the donors who make it possible for the students to receive those scholarships. It's not only just the money that they receive through the letters that we, we receive from the students, they tell us a story, how this has motivated them to succeed, to continue on, that they love the fact that someone has confidence in their and we're back at the Collins Arena as we start the fourth quarter. Brian Gadsford, Tim Catalfamo with you. Jersey Blues start the fourth with a seven point lead. Bankle out for Andrews, three pointer. Comes up short, rebounded by Ligon. And it's Williams to set it up for the Blue Jays. Williams, that's for three. No good, rebound to Erico. She gets tied up, winds up hitting the ground as Kalima Daniels was there defensively. Possession arrow this time will favor Manor College. Williams, they give her the three. Rimming, no. Rebound, Brannigan. Brannigan lost it, but it's out of bounds off the Blue Jays. I tell you what, Brian, Manor's hanging around in this game. They're not going away. Brookdale really hasn't been able to put the final nail in the coffin, so to speak. They've had some miscommunications on offense. We've seen a lot of turnovers, and even though Manor has struggled shooting-wise, they're hanging around with Brookdale. Again, this game is not any way over. It's a team that really struggles from three-point range as they shoot just 27%, and they have had a difficult time in this game. Brannigan step back, that's for two, and she connects. Now, Colleen Brannigan, who got off to the great start, was quiet in the second half, but she knocks down that one. And this is the largest lead for Brookdale of the night. It's nine. 
work it around. Daniels, she's not shy about shooting, but she has not had the touch in this game. Rouse, the spin, oh, wow. the layup is good. Oh, what a move for two. That was unbelievable. That was all by herself. Nobody was there to help her. One on two opportunity, and she still was able to get the two. Here is a three, no good on the try by Ligon. The shot up on the second try, and then Garvin tries her luck, but that misses. Bankle able to pry it oh. away. Bankle just lost it and it's gonna be a travel. She was some indecision of whether she wanted to take it all the way to the rim or to give it up, and the travel is called. Yeah, she saw Rouse all the way underneath the basket, and she was trying to get it up to her, but she couldn't quite get that to her hands and her legs as she was moving at the same time. A little bit of miscommunication there with her brain and her feet, but unfortunately for Brookdale, another turnover. Williams swings it, but the pass too high for Garvin. And when you're down 11, you cannot afford to be turning the basketball over. Well, it's been an issue really for both sides, but especially Manor. Brookdale working with the double figure lead, 42-31. Andrews slowing down the pace. Rouse, pass was tipped, comes back to Rouse. Eight to shoot for Brannigan and now Andrews. Andrews with five. Andrews gives it up and it's stolen. As Garvin the other way, lead pass ahead. Williams, Brannigan gets back in transition for the denial. Colleen Brannigan's been all over the floor tonight, Brian. I mean, we talked about possibly her not being 100% with that leg injury. We weren't sure how much we were gonna see her, but she's been on the floor practically all game and has played really well. This has been an outstanding effort defensively all the way around for Brookdale. This time Adams got great position and nothing you could do there. As Adams at six foot one, able to put it home. They're holding the opposition at just 33 points with just under seven minutes left to go. Brannigan shot blocked on the perimeter by Dowd. The try and transition now for Manor. Dowd to the rim. Shot won't go, but a foul is called. And Sean Dowd will shoot free throws. Andrews commits the personal. Yeah, Brookdale, I think you were talking about this earlier in the game, Brian, has not really committed that many personal fouls. We really haven't seen too many trips to the line on both sides. So you're really not gonna win this game from the free throw line at this point. Dowd no good on the first attempt. 65% free throw shooter. And talking about this team shooting a ton of free throws, Dowd is among the leaders. And in her last game, she shot 12 of 12 from the free throw line. That one no good, Bankel the rebound. Bankel gave up her dribble, able to float it ahead for Brannigan. You never want to pick up your dribble in the back court, particularly when you don't have numbers back there to help you. So luckily, Bankel was able to find an outlet in Brannigan. Shot clock inside 10 seconds. Brookdale way outside. Now Bankel on the drive and the bank shot doesn't go. It's rebounded by Williams. Manor trying to make a run down nine. Dowd inside the arc, off the rim. Offensive rebound, Garvin. Williams flipped it up. Jump ball is called as Erico and Garvin were there, and it's Brookdale basketball. Substitution for Manor into the game, China Steel replacing Jockey Williams. And I tell you, one player who we have not heard very much of tonight, Brian, for Manor has been Tiana Gavin. She's been very quiet. Remember, we mentioned she had 28 points in the last time that Manor played, and she comes in for the Blue Jays, averaging just under 13. But she's been fairly quiet in this game. I was expecting to see a little bit more out of her tonight. Brookdale gives it up, gives it up on the turnover. Dad, the nice pass for Steele, and she finishes with the left hand. 
Good fast break executed that time by the Blue Jays, who are within striking distance. This just a seven point game. Approach the five minute mark of this fourth quarter. And what has been a defensive struggle all game. Andrews into the paint, nearly lost it. Brannigan steps inside the arc, too strong on the jumper, out of bounds, and it's going the other way. Yeah, every time you think that you can kind of put Count Manor out of this game, they come back, they score a couple of baskets, Brookdale has a couple of bad offensive possessions, and they're still hanging around, like you said, Brian, it's not over yet. Feeding the post for Dowd, able to save it. And a foul is called on Bankle as Steele started the drive. Third team foul against the Jersey Blues. It's the first on Bankle. And Garvin will inbound underneath for Manor. Erico got a piece of that pass. Rolls out of bounds in his last touch by the Jersey Blues. So Garvin this time the inbound near side. Here's a substitution. Kalima Daniels coming in to replace China Steel. Garvin the inbounder. Dowd against Bankle. Dowd to the corner. Daniels short on a three. Long rebound out to Dowd. Reset of the shot clock. Garvin off the glass, doesn't go. Adams keeps it alive and scores. Again, another offensive possession on that drive for Manor where they're able to keep the possession alive, getting some nice offensive rebounds. Finally, they're able to make it count. Wingo down low, back out Brannigan. Wingo on the baseline, her jumper way off the mark. Rebounded by Daniels. Daniels pushing in transition and now backs it out. Ooh. That's off Erico last out of bounds. And a timeout is taken by the Blue Jays sideline. We're down to 3.52 left in this fourth quarter. It's a five-point game on Brookdale TV. My daughter was born premature, and the hospital's respiratory therapist saved her life. When the economy crashed, we moved back to New Jersey for my husband's career, but nobody was hiring drama teachers. So I joined the respiratory therapy program at Brookdale. It's a great field with job security, and you can be there for people who really need you. My name is Joriel Miller, and I came to Brookdale to change my career. I never imagined I could help save a life. Hi, my name is Tom Siapa, and I am in the political science department here at Brookdale Community College. I have been here for 15 years now. I have a PhD in political science from Colorado State University. And from Colorado State, I found my way here to Brookdale in the fall of 1999. I teach courses in a number of different areas, including American government, international relations, comparative politics, and environmental politics. Here at Brookdale, we try to cover a wide range of subject matters and topics for the students to study. And why should you study political science? You should study political science because it matters. And you matter. And when you learn about government and politics. And we're back here, Brian Cadsword, Tim Cattlefamo. Outside the timeout in the final four minutes of the first game of our doubleheader as the ball's knocked out of bounds. It stays on this end with the Blue Jays. This has been one of the more low scoring games that Brookdale has played all season. As both sides have had their difficulties on the offensive end, especially Manor. Shot clock is down to seven. Davis gives it up. Daniels, it's a three, that's short. Daniels, that is a heads up play as she knocks it off Lingo to give Manor another possession. I was just gonna say the same thing, Brian. Really smart 
to try to get it off Alingo's foot, keep the possession alive. Again, Manor's still in this game, only down by five. They just got to make their baskets here. They're just coming up short on a lot of good opportunities. Davis fell to the ground. Andrews comes up with the steal. Andrews gets fouled. That's an unnecessary one on Deja Davis. It'll be the second team foul against the Blue Jays of this fourth quarter. And for Davis, it's her second. Five on the floor for Brookdale. It's Andrews, Brannigan, Lingo, Erico, and Bankel. Brookdale 42, Manor 37. Three minutes left to go. Playing catch along the perimeter. Andrews the jump step. Bankle wide open, releases at three off the side of the rim, rebound Dowd. Dowd to the rim, scoop layup is good off the glass. Nice move by Sean Dowd. Sophomore from Upper Darby, Pennsylvania. Yeah, Brookdale, Brook go ahead, Brian. Brookdale lead is just three with two and a half to go. Erico double teamed. Nowhere to go. Stolen away. Here comes Garvin. Brannigan to beat. Garvin throws it up. Brannigan was there to knock it out of bounds. And the Blue Jays will inbound underneath. Garvin for Dowd, jumper off the front rim. Garvin the offensive rebound. Blocking foul is called on Brookdale. This will work against Gianna Errico, her first. So Brookdale has allowed Manor to creep back closer into this game. Here's a travel, that's a costly one on Deja Davis. And we'll get a timeout taken by Rich Brunson and the Jersey Blues down at 2.10 left to go. Tight game here at the Collins Arena. We'll be back. In just a few short months, tens of thousands of visitors will spend part of their summer along the sandy white beaches of Belmar. Besides catching some rays, many of them will also be catching some cool tunes Thursday nights, enjoying 90.5 The Night's Songwriters on the Beach concerts. This free concert series, located on the Fifth Avenue Boardwalk along the panoramic Atlantic Ocean in Belmar, brings a beach full of music lovers throughout the summer. If you'd like to have your company's message in front of an audience that is well-educated, affluent, and community-minded, then now is the time to secure your involvement. Email Kristen at kflorio at wbjv.org for more information on this affordable sponsorship opportunity. I went to college right after high school but it didn't work out. After a few years in the workforce and the birth of my son, I decided to give college another try. At Brookdale, something clicked. I met amazing professors and found a major I was passionate about. I made the Dean's List, landed a great internship, and now I'm pursuing my bachelor's degree. Thanks to Brookdale, I have what it takes to see my dreams through. I'm Tara Boyce, and I came to Brookdale to give college another try. I never imagined I would find my passion. And we're back here on Brookdale TV. Final 2.10 left to go in regulation. Brookdale trying to hold on to what is now just a three-point lead over the Manor College Blue Jays. Brookdale looking to get a victory over a Division II opponent, which would be impressive. Should give them confidence as they go down the stretch here in their final four games of the season, three after tonight. It's Brannigan on the perimeter. Garvin there defensively. Shot clock inside 10 seconds, and that is a disastrous possession for Brookdale as Manor takes over. Nowhere near the basket, and it turns into a turnover. Yeah, that's just too much dribbling there by Colleen Brannigan. I'm not sure if there was someone who was trying to come around and set a screen, but she was dribbling at least for 15 seconds. You can't do that. I'm surprised that's what happened coming out of a timeout. So now Manor can tie with a three, but they'll go for the two, and inside it's Adams. This is a one-point game inside a minute and a half to go. We haven't had many close ones here on Brookdale TV. Yeah, Brookdale really needs a bucket here. 
Andrews deep on the wing. Andrews is fouled. No, it's a travel. Andrews hit the ground. There was certainly contact, but as she hit the ground, the officials blow the whistle. Traveling is the call, and another Jersey Blue turnover here in the final moments. And I actually have to agree with the officials. That was traveling on Chikashi Andrews. There was some contact, yes, but that's in no way a shooting foul. It's actually a very good call. Manor College can take the lead on this possession. I'm not sure if they've had the lead all game. Daniels for the lead, no good. Brannigan touched it last out of bounds. Another opportunity for the Blue Jays. Down under a minute to go now. Garvin to inbound on the far side. Bankled in her face. Get it in cleanly. Davis sets up the offense. Davis into the lane, puts it up off the glass, no good. Davis falls to the ground, traveled. And this time it goes on Manor College. Brookdale forces a big time turnover. There's about a nine second different shot in game clock. Will Manor foul. Brannigan defended by Garvin. Two defenders are there and a foul is called. And head coach Dave Ellerby cannot believe that one. That's the second against his team of this fourth quarter. Yeah, Colleen Brannigan got bailed out by that foul because I thought she was actually going to lose the ball right at midcourt. She was double teamed. And we will get a timeout. Down the stretch we go, 27.8 seconds left. And this has been a very close game. And Brookdale has squandered a lead as large as 12 points, but here we are now inside a half minute as we get a quick look at the men's team there. But this game has been a nail biter. Yeah, I, I've said it for the last couple of minutes. I talked about it early in the first half that Brookdale would need to do a better job of boxing out on defense, particularly with how many close shots Manor has had underneath that just have not rolled in, have not gone in. Brookdale has struggled on the offensive end. You really have to give credit to Manor particularly. They've played some really nice defense. They've made mistakes of their own, but they've played some pretty good defense. Brookdale's played nice defense of themselves, but the problem has been in this game for the Jersey Blues is they have really have not boxed out very well, and it's allowed Manor to get second, third chance opportunities on offense late in this fourth quarter, which is something that they were not doing in early on in the game. They've been able to make some of those shots and make those opportunities count. While on the other side, Brookdale has not really been able to get any shots to go in and has struggled with the Manor defense. So this is really a back and forth game. It really shouldn't have been this close, but right now it is. Brookdale, I can't say this enough, really needs a basket, I feel, on this possession in order to feel safe. Well, Manor is going to be forced to foul as Andrews, it's going the other way. Andrews fell to the ground. Rich Brunson is wondering what the call was. Wow. Was it a travel? I don't know, bro. I thought clearly Andrews was pushed out of bounds there. I don't know. So here we go. Shot clock turned off. 20 seconds left. Brookdale hanging on by dear life, leading by one. In the hands of Daniels. Daniels for Dowd. Bank call, trying to force the steal. Daniels gets it back. Final 10 seconds. Erico gets on the floor to get it. Andrews, and she gets fouled as she hits the ground. Manor is not over the foul limit, so it will not result in free throws for Andrews. Brookdale instead to inbound on the side. It will be Erico, but first another timeout, this time taken by the Blue Jays. With wow. 6.5 seconds left. And we'll take a quick break right now and come back to the Collins Arena. Enter the growing field of healthcare. It is projected that more than 56,000 jobs will be added through 2018, according to New Jersey Department of Labor and Workforce Development. Brookdale's healthcare training programs provide you with the necessary skills to be successful in this expanding field of healthcare. Our Certified Nurse Aid Program, or commonly referred to as CNA, is a New Jersey Department. Back to the Collins Arena, 6.5 seconds left. It's Brookdale 42, Manor College 41. Manor still has to commit two more personals before the Jersey Blues shoot free throws. 
And there's only six and a half seconds left, so their best hope is getting a steal. Erico, and she throws it right to Dowd. Four seconds left, Dowd. And a timeout is taken by Manor. There has just been a host of timeouts in the last 30 seconds or so. But we'll, we'll keep it here. And Tim, I mean, this game feels like we can't get into a rhythm here because of all the timeouts on both sides, but costly mistakes by the Jersey Blues down the stretch. They have basically given this game away. Yeah, it's been really unfortunate to watch this because you talked about Brookdale having a big lead. I've talked about the lack of offensive rebounding, the lack of boxing out on defense, but on that last possession on the inbounds play, that's a difficult place to be in, particularly if you're Gianna Erico. Where they were inbounding, they were inbounding in the backcourt. So let's set the scene there. If Manor's able to get a steal, they don't have to go very far. They already have the ball on their side of the court. So what Erica was trying to do was trying to get the ball away and try to give it into Hermione Bankel's hands. The problem is that's not a very easy uh, pass to make, particularly coming out of the inbounds play. I don't know, we'll see how this plays out, but this has definitely been uh, a game that Brookdale has let slip through their fingers. 3.7 left, inbounds for Daniels. Daniels shot short, loose. And it looks like they're gonna have to put time back on the clock. The clock had expired, but the ball was knocked out of bounds. Now the officials are gonna get together to see if more time will be added. I don't know. As the Jersey Blues knocked it out of bounds. So this game may be over. Now the official will make his way to the scores table to check. The red light is on the backboard. No time is showing on the clock. How much are they gonna put on? Well, in the meantime, yet again, we'll get a timeout. Now, I don't know how much time they're gonna put on the clock, but I can't imagine it would be more than a second. Yeah, I was thinking maybe a half a second at the most. I mean, I don't think it's very much because where the ball went out of bounds, was there a foul on that last play or was it out of bounds? I'm not, I'm not quite no, sure no, what the officials no called. No foul was called. But when that last whistle blew, there was like maybe five tenths of a second or something like that. I'm not sure. That's really, really tough. And like I said, we don't have instant replay here for the officials to look at. So now it looks like they're going to put .3 on the clock. .3 on the clock. So Manor cannot catch and shoot. This is going to have to be a tip-in if Manor's going to get a basket here. That's their only hope, and that would be nothing short of a miracle. This has been a wild one. It's gonna be Deja Davis to inbound. Brookdale has to make sure they defend the bigger players. Here we go with point three left, and the pass goes over the head of Garvin. Ball game over, and the Jersey Blues have survived a nail biter and a really good ball game. After nearly squandering a lead as large as double figures, they get a quality win here at home to extend to a four game winning streak and more importantly, knock off one of the division two teams in the region 19 in Manor College. Very nearly gave this game away with key turnovers down the stretch. But in the end, they managed to come away with the one point win. Yeah, I think you said it perfectly. I think Brookdale really survived this game. Manor had several opportunities late in this game, particularly with the offensive rebounding that they were getting. The shots just didn't fall. All these things that factor in. And Brookdale could not score a basket those last five or six minutes. They were really struggling from the offensive floor. So you have to give credit to Manor for playing good defense, not giving up on the game. But particularly in this game, I think you said it best in that Brookdale survived. It's a great win. It's a W. This really matter how it happens it's still a win but my gosh they gave it away maybe five or six times late in this game and they're just barely able to get away with a win so for Brookdale they only score 42 points that's their fewest output of the season but it's good enough to get a victory now one thing we should touch on their next game they're gonna take a visit up to Middlesex Brookdale is second in the region 19 the only team they trail is Middlesex that should be quite a game coming up on Thursday and remember they beat Middlesex early on in the year so it's not something that's impossible, but I don't know if you can really base their 
or haven't much confidence going into that game based on the performance today. I understand that Manor is not necessarily at the level of where Middlesex is as a Division Three school in Middlesex and compared to Manor that's Division Two. But still, I don't think that Brookfield is anyway ready for this game. They're going to have to go back to the drawing board. And one thing in particular, I've said it many times in this broadcast, rebounding. We've talked about this team struggling all year, particularly tonight. That was almost the thing that gave this game away for the Jersey Blues. They're going to have to do a better job of that going on into these next couple of games that they have coming up for the regular season. And this was a good time for Brookdale to get back to full strength as far as the roster because for the last several weeks they had been playing with a short roster either injuries or otherwise but now they have their full group going down the stretch and even further as they head towards the tournament now. Yeah we saw Colleen Brannigan come in we really weren't sure how many games she was going to how many how much time she was going to play because of that right leg injury that she sustained earlier in the, the month of January but particularly now she's been playing really really well she was on the floor for the majority of the game tonight and like I said she was one of the leaders that Brookdale depended on not so much Chikash Andrews it was really Colleen Brannigan that they leaned on on offense so that'll do it for the first game of our double header Brookdale gets the win it was a wild one but the Jersey Blues knock off Manor College once again the final score tonight Brookdale 42 Manor 41 so that does it for us we'll be back for the second game coming up after the break for now though down we go courtside with our sideline reporter Nico Vocatoro joining me is Jersey Blue Jer Jersey Blues head coach Rich Brunson Rich now this was your lowest scoring output of the season only putting up 42 points but you guys somehow managed to get the win now as a head coach what do you have to tell your girls in order to get the win in a close game like this hey, keep fighting I mean uh I give credit to my uh, my assistant coaches did a great job scouting his team, but hey, the game plan is to keep them from penetrating. We just got to get better doing the little things, and I think the rebounding part of it is is, is probably uh, what's hurting us. Being able to rebound, finish out games, and playing with a lot of fire. Yeah. So we'll go back to the drawing table and we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, it's getting close to the region, so we we have to just play harder. Got to play harder. Okay, coach. Four game win streak. Keep it going. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Nick. Absolutely.